Welcome back to the John Audio Tech channel everyone. Here's the messy bench. I have a little amp board to review today. But first I must apologize for not having videos up very often. It's been about a week and a half since I put up a video. Since monetizing my channel, I like to get a couple videos up a week. I've just been very busy with work and I'm behind trying to catch up with that. It's not due to a lack of material for videos. I have a lot of stuff to shoot. I have another board somebody sent me. Thanks Mike for sending a board in for me. And several other things waiting to be filmed. It's just getting around to doing it. Well I sat down to film the second installment of my audio amplifier output topology video over the weekend. And I got a call from my mom and she was upset saying my dad was having heart problems. He was going into the ER so I had to put all that on hold and uh, deal with that. My dad has heart valve issues. It's congenital. He's had it all of his life. Never been an issue. But now that he's in his mid-70s, that stuff starts to creep up and catch up to you. So uh, he's got to deal with that. I think he'll get through it okay. Just waiting on um, getting information back from the cardiologist. I'd like to get back on the amplifier topology video. You know, that's going to take a little bit of circuit setup and design. Uh, hopefully I can do that on the weekend. So I decided to go ahead and shoot this video now because it's a little easier for me to do. So what we have here is a TDA 2822M linear type stereo amplifier. It has a volume control, a little input jack here, and these connectors on the end. I'm not crazy about these blue ones. They're not the easiest to use, but they'll do. Have your power supply input, output and ground, that's the left, and output right and ground. I'm not sure, it looks like a misspelling there. DTD or something. They meant to put output, I, I would imagine. So there you have it, it's a single sided through hole board. I did do a video on this chip separately, but that was on my breadboard. This is an actual board, and I want to see how well it performs. So hook up some speakers, power, and music. See what it sounds like. Everything wired up. And we'll do a little sample here. And that is from a band called The Trees, 1971 album on the shore. It's what they call an acid folk type band because they used electric instruments. But I thought they had very good music. Shame some of these bands just don't get recognized. As far as background hiss goes, there is some, but... Surprising that this chip has so much gain, 40 dB. The background noise is not that bad at all. Well, there is an issue with this amplifier already. I have the volume all the way up. And the volume on this thing is all the way up. And... not even clipping so yeah this thing is just not doesn't have enough gain or something I know the chip does but look at this they have voltage divider resistors on the input so they have the volume control and then they run through these voltage dividers and I'm going to have to figure out what resistor I should put in there to fix that it looks like a uh, 22k and a 1.5k so if I drop this down to maybe like 4.7k it would make it a lot louder 
Okay, the modification has been made. Much better. Here's a schematic of one of the input channels of the amplifier. The problem with the TDA 2822M, it has very high gain, around 40 dB. So they had to reduce the signal coming in somewhat. The problem is they overdone it and made the signal too weak. So what we have here is the input comes in here through a 50K potentiometer then through what was the 22k resistor and next is a 1.5k resistor which shunts the high impedance of this circuit to ground so there's very little signal left so what i did is replace this resistor with a 4.7k which is a lot which allows more signal to pass also notice that there is no input coupling capacitor and that's because the design of this amplifier has a um, ground referenced input stage. So it doesn't have to have it. I usually would include one anyway because if you have any voltage offset on your input signal, it could be a problem with the amplifier. Okay, power test time. Okay, I'll adjust this, starting to clip on the, the peak. So I'll tune that out right about there not a real pretty sine wave it's more pointed at the top and smoother at the bottom as if it's laden with second harmonics and we'll take a look at that a little bit later and uh, well that's peak to peak we want RMS so we're putting out two volts RMS and I don't even have to use the calculator because that's half a watt into 8 ohm loads. So that's maximum power just before clipping both channels driven into 8 ohm loads. Okay, let's look at the distortion. Turn this off. And, wow, that's pretty awful. Let me turn that down. Okay, well, here's my 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal, the 1 kilohertz fundamental. We have a huge second order harmonic, and that's why we see that sine wave looking like that, because that is quite large. Let's see, that's not quite one per graticule. Two, three, four, five. Six, probably like eight percent. We have a uh, about 1.5 percent or so of a, a third order, maybe two percent, then some smaller nodes. That'd be five, six, seven, seventh harmonic. Very bizarre because when I set this up on the breadboard, I wasn't getting all this. Do a frequency sweep here. Check the response. Seems to be dropping a little bit. It could be the signal becoming more linear because of that large second harmonic it's not really symmetrical across the axis here not bad but it's not perfectly flat I'm checking the lower end of the scale now. It's approaching 20 hertz momentarily, right about there. Of course, it's going to be a lot smaller because it has a 
470 microfarad coupling capacitor but it's not too bad it ramps up pretty decent around 30 Hertz and should continue to grow as the frequency increases and here are the power test results went up to 9 volts with the 8 ohm loads both channels driven chip gets very hot so no way would I run it with 12 volts 8 ohm loads because you know it's just a tiny little chip there's no real heat sinking or dissipation even playing music it was getting pretty warm so I wouldn't recommend going higher than 9 volts and of course we got half a watt per channel at 6 volts we got 220 milliwatts 4.5 volts it put out 100 milliwatts and at 3 volts it put out 40 milliwatts and it does run down to one and a half volts but you really you know it doesn't make sense to test it any lower than 3 volts because your power output is so weak at such a low voltage it doesn't really make sense it is great for battery power because the quiescent current in other words the current it draws just sitting idle is only 10 milliamps. The troubling thing with this little board is the distortion. Why am I getting so much second order harmonic from a push-pull type amplifier? No IC amplifier should be putting out such horrendous distortion, especially such a large second harmonic that we saw on the scope there. So uh, very troubling, doesn't make sense to me. When I tested the chip that I know is authentic on the socket board you know the distortion wasn't nearly as bad but this thing which you know it's I don't really have a big issue with the layout I mean it's not the best in the world but it's not horrible I really shouldn't be getting a lot of distortion from this amplifier so yeah I question the authenticity of the chip they're using the chip was discontinued a long time ago and it wouldn't make sense that that they would use some sort of counterfeit die but because of the popularity of it they you know they might have I don't know so well I can't really quite recommend this it doesn't sound too bad it's just the, uh, the other issues and it did need a modification to get the gain up to where I think it should be well that's it thanks for watching